posted by you slash Garrett in 2508 my wife came home from deployment and said she is no longer in love with me or attracted to me, but she wants to make it work. I can't wrap my head around this so please bear with me. My wife went on a year-long deployment and got home about three months ago. Things were perfectly fine before she left, but have been progressively worse up until now. She vehemently refuses. Any physical intimacy aside from snuggles, hugs, and basic pack kisses, nothing sexual whatsoever, and, up until last night, refused to talk with me or communicate with me about any of it whatsoever. She has been dealing with some severe depression for several months now, even before she got back due to the nature of her job, but she has said she just needs time and space to sort things out so. I've been giving that to her. She refuses professional help or counseling, says she isn't ready for that yet, and she hasn't made any intentional effort to work on herself in other ways either. Well, yesterday enough was enough. I told her that we were finally going to talk and that I refused to wait or put things off any longer. We set a time and date, and we went for a walk and talked for about 45 minutes where she dropped the bombshell in the title. She says I'm the perfect husband and that it's not me, it's her and that she's broken. She isn't in love with me, isn't happy about anything right now, and is no longer attracted to me. When I asked for clarification, she said she is still physically attracted to me but not sexually. She wants nothing to do with me in that way and I don't know how you can come back from that. She broke down last night when I refused to let her touch me when laying in bed together. She wants me to snuggle her and be there for her, I've done nothing but bend over backwards for her with literally nothing in return for essentially a year now, but I am repulsed by the idea after hearing that yesterday. I held her when she broke down which made her cry, even more, and I just can't make sense of it. I told her during our walk that I am and have been thinking of leaving her, I have been every day for months. I don't want to be in a one-sided marriage. Sexual intimacy and communication are top priorities for me and they haven't existed since before her deployment. She says she wants to be with me and wants to work on things, I do too, more than anything, but I just don't see how it's possible to come back from that. Thing is, I know I'm an attractive guy and I've used the pandemic to get in even better shape than I was before, not quite the level I was at when we met, but you can tell I've put effort in. I also got LASIK and have been getting dental work done. I look the best I have in years. It's not that. It's her depression and whatever else is going on with her that I am unaware of because she hasn't told me. I want nothing more than to make it work as well, but I can't make my spouse be in love with me nor would I want to. You fall in and out of love over time depending on life circumstance, but always come back together. I don't know how to come back from this without professional help which she refuses. There's literally nothing else I could possibly do to make things easier or better for her I don't think. I do everything with nothing in return. She works insane hours and watches TV and messes around in her garden which I built for her amidst all of this. But I can't even get her to go to the store on her day off when I'm working 12-hour shifts. The lack of attraction is what I can't get past. How do you recover from that? She also refuses to tell our families which I think would help. They are the most important people in our lives and in my mind you should rely on them in times like these. Can anyone give any insight or advice into this situation? I'm not ready to pull the divorce trigger but also don't know how to navigate this. Thanks. Update 1, my wife walked out of our marriage. Counseling session. Looking for advice things have been getting better between my wife and I for the last few weeks. She's been wanting to snuggle and be close and spend time together constantly. It's been nice. She asked if we could move marriage counseling from weekly to bi-weekly since things have been better, so I agreed. There is still zero sexual contact slash intimacy whatsoever, which is fine. It's been 16 months, but she was on deployment for a year of that and she isn't ready for that yet. She still needs time to adjust, and I've been respecting that. That's not the problem. The problem is that she isn't working on our relationship. We still aren't talking. I can't even bring anything up without destroying her day or her mood, and causing her to shut down and want to be left alone for the rest of the day. Although things are better, she still refuses to talk about anything. We've been going to marriage counseling for like three or four sessions so far. I thought we were making progress. The counselor asked if I could step back and give her space, and I've been doing that for almost two months now. She has been better because of that. The counselor asked my wife to do things to regain intimacy, and she's been doing some of those things. Not all, but some. It's a start. 
Baby steps. Better than nothing. The other problem is that she isn't working on herself, either. She still hasn't sought individual counseling for her depression. This is a major red flag for me. This is supposedly the source of all of our problems, but she isn't doing anything about it. She's just pushing everything off so she doesn't have to deal with it. Same thing with our relationship. Yesterday was supposed to be our bi-weekly counseling session. The day started out great. We made breakfast together and sat at the table and had coffee slash breakfast together. It was nice. We started planning out our day since we both had off work, had a few nice things planned and we were both feeling good and optimistic about the day. That's when I reminded her that our couple's counseling was in the afternoon so we had to include that in our plans. Her entire demeanor changed. Granted, I haven't talked about anything the last two weeks. Anything. I haven't even brought anything about our relationship. Not once. We've just been going day to day and enjoying our time together. After I brought that up. She wanted nothing to do with me until our counseling, and she just sat in silence while we were waiting for it to start. Anyway, we started the counseling session. The counselor asked how things were going, I said things were going great until this morning. She inquired about that obviously, which is when I explained that things were going great until I reminded my wife that we had couples. Counseling. We talked for a few more minutes, and then my wife got upset and just said I can't do this today and walked upstairs. She remained there for the rest of the session while I talked with the counselor. The couple's counselor sympathized with me and didn't charge me for the session, even though they stayed and talked with me the entire time. She suggested that I write her letters slash emails, instead of talking because something about talking triggers my wife. So I did. She appreciated the letter, and was able to cuddle up on the couch and watch movies with me last night because of it. I've been seeing an individual counselor to help me deal with all of this. She said I need to set boundaries and stick to them because what my wife is doing is just ridiculous. This was before yesterday. The couple's counselor agreed with that as well. I've come up with three boundaries and consequences. 1. My wife seeks private individual counseling or I leave her. I can't do this anymore. I can't live like this. 2. My wife starts to communicate about our relationship or I won't snuggle her or sleep in the same room anymore. If she doesn't want to deal with the hard stuff in the relationship, she doesn't get to enjoy the good stuff, either. 3. My wife starts to help with chores around the house or I will only do my stuff and leave her stuff dirty slash undone, i.e. dishes slash laundry. I really hope this doesn't get deleted because I'd really appreciate other married couples advice slash insights. I want to go back to weekly counseling, but my wife's family is visiting the next few weeks so it will have to wait until after they leave. That puts me in a really awkward position. I had contacted a divorce attorney. I had them prepare the paperwork for divorce, but I cancelled the case because my wife said it made her feel that I had no hope or faith left in the relationship. Update 2. I'm taking a two-week break from my wife. I've made a few posts on here in recent months about my wife and our marriage issues and I greatly appreciate everyone's responses and advice. I've decided to take a two-week break from her with no contact whatsoever. I'm staying with a close friend and co-worker, and I've talked at length with my counselor about it and she thinks that is what's best for me as well. My wife finally decided to start individual counseling after I told her I was taking a break, but I don't even care about that right now. I don't want to talk to her or think about her at all for the next few weeks and just focus on me and spending time with friends and family. If she has a revelation while I'm gone that she can't not have me in her life and wants to make it work and start putting forth the effort, great. That is what I'm hoping for more than anything because I love her and want to make it work and be with her forever. But if nothing has changed and she still doesn't care after two weeks away from me then she's never going to. The relationship will be over for me and I will be done trying at that point. In the meantime, I'm going to focus on me and do what's right for me because I desperately need it and I have to look out for myself. I've been absolutely miserable for a year and a half and that's not okay. It takes Two and one-sided marriages simply don't exist without one side being miserable. I refuse to live like that. I deserve so much better and so much more. Thanks for listening and being their internet strangers. Update 3. I'm filing for divorce after my wife had an emotional affair on her deployment basically. My wife and I had a perfect marriage until she went on a year-long deployment starting. March 2020. We have been together for 8 years and married for 7. 
She completely abandoned me during the deployment during COVID when I was completely alone with no family within 2,500 miles, only hearing from her every 9 to 10 days or so even though she worked on the computer all day every day and was able to email me. It was always a short-ass paragraph too with no substance to it. Fast forward to. When she comes home, she wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. She refused any physical intimacy whatsoever and absolutely would not talk to me or communicate with me about our relationship or anything for the first three entire months. When she finally talked, she said she was no longer in love with me and no longer attracted to me. We started counseling. I gave her space. I gave her time. I found messages to her superior, see quotes below. I gave her an ultimatum. Me or him. Emotional affair so stop contact with him or lose me. A month or so goes by. Supposedly no contact. I decide to take a break. I come home for my suitcase and more clothes for a trip to visit family. See 2,500 miles away and for the first time in years. This was last night, and she is on the phone with her. Superior when I walk in. Marriage over. R slash marriage has full details. Some of you asked what my wife said to her superior slash coworker. Here are direct quotes. I just want you to know that I and the rest of the division love and miss you very much, especially me, I've been a mess thinking about you, I should never have told you that I couldn't talk to you anymore, I said that in spite due to an argument with my husband, he was extremely mad with me, I sent that and showed him the message because I was so defeated and upset, it was not your fault, I feel so guilty about it, I abandoned you, I should never have done that as you have always, always been there for me. I immediately regretted sending that but I was too upset and scared to resend it. I felt lost with what was going on in my own life. It was hard putting on a face for my family. I couldn't wait to come back to work and talk to you. The office could literally be set ablaze and I wouldn't have cared. I was worried about you. I was going to stay late to catch up on stuff, as is my custom for multiple reasons, but instead I left immediately. My paperwork was still scattered across my desk. I would do anything for you. Whatever you need please let me be there for you. I can't not have you in my life. With everything that's happened, God I am so worried about you. Please let me help you. Please. Tell me you want nothing from me, to go fuck myself, I don't care. I just want you to be okay. You mean the world to me and I will do whatever it takes to keep you safe. Love you, as do we all. Stay strong, we have. You're back she met this guy on or just before deployment. Guy was having a hard time balancing work and home life and confided in my wife. He was or is getting divorced, my wife is the only one he worked with who knew slash knows that. I told her that this message was absolutely an emotional affair and that she had to stop talking with him permanently or I was out. I ended up going home last night to get my suitcase and more stuff for a longer time away and for a trip to visit family. She was talking to him on the phone when I walked in. She has apparently talked with him every day since I started my two-week break on Monday, and she initiated the conversations. She actually started Monday night as soon as I was gone. She messaged him first. So anyway, I grabbed my shit, said I wanted a divorce, and stormed out. She ran in front of me and begged and pleaded for me to come inside and talk to her. She swore up and down she wouldn't talk to him ever again, said it wasn't worth it. AKA the exact same shit she said last time. We talked for a bit more and she said she still loves me and cares for me deeply, but she isn't in love and she is very unhappy with me. She said she has been for a while and that I am the source of her stress and unhappiness. She's apparently been super happy the last week by herself and she doesn't know if she even wants to be with me anymore because of it. She wants to sit down and talk after I get back in two weeks to see how she feels then and if she wants to make it work. She said things with us were perfect before her deployment and that's the only thing keeping her around. But why am I keeping her around? She doesn't respect my boundaries and broke my trust. I think divorce is the only option. I'm done. Filing for divorce immediately after I get home from my trip. Posted by you slash braid annoyed my high school love cheated on me with multiple AP. Back in high school when I was 17, I'm nearly 22 now, there was a girl from within my friend group. That would end up being my first for everything. First love, first kiss, first lay, etc. I was happy, and she was happy. We stayed together after moving to university and things were storybook for two years. The first incident was in 2019. 
She was sexually assaulted that spring by a friend of hers. I was not, and am not mad at her. I don't consider that to be cheating or anything adjacent. I was her emotional support during her recovery, and she told me so. She told me that I was doing everything perfectly, and I still believe that to be true. Nearly immediately after this though, she found a freshman guy at her college who had made friends with her. However, this guy and her had a spot of emotional infidelity. She developed feelings for him, and they were love-struck. My dumbass didn't see it though. She invited him over to meet me, she invited him to events as a third wheel, and fucking hell I even cooked for him. I figured them just close friends and left it at that. I eventually came to her with concerns, but she just told me just the same, telling me that my gal pals from university were welcome to be invited in likewise manner. But it wasn't until after she eventually cheated that I saw the signs. The touching, the looks, the word choice, the sudden absence in my life as the man slowly begun to replace me. I come from an Italian family, so I am used to treating people with platonic affection, I do it myself, so at the time I thought nothing of it. However, I never get as affectionate with my friends as she did with him. The cheating rightly began in December. With them exchanging nudes while she was away on vacation with her family. She texted me about it and apologized profusely. I dismissed it all as one-off circumstance, given that I had been oblivious to everything by that point and I just wanted it all to go away as fast as possible. However, the next month in January 2020, she cheated on me proper. I never would have known if she didn't call me. She was in hysterics and she apologized through the wailing. She didn't even have the stones to tell me to my face. I was destroyed. I spoke not but silence and hung up. I was wrecked. I couldn't think. But fucking hell, she manipulated me to stay. She cited mental health and the traumatic event earlier the previous year, and used them to convince me that they caused this allegedly one-off event, and that this would never happen again. I had even begun to convince myself that it was my fault despite her overt claims to the opposite. I regret it so much now, but I'd never been in a relationship before her and despite my overwhelming sorrow, I assumed that this must just be something everyone goes through. So, I weathered it and we slowly grew back together in the way a deep wound scars the skin, whole but not the same. The pandemic happened, and they stayed in contact. I foolishly assumed the emotional infidelity would stop, that they'd lay off like she promised. She didn't, but she slowly started to realize that their friendship was only predicated on infidelity, however they remained friends regardless, trying to forge a more platonic relationship. That autumn, despite my wishes, she had him come over so that him and I could reconcile. Three times she tried this, but with each having the same result as the one prior, I would isolate myself emotionally from the world until he left. Anything he or my ex said was gibberish and all I heard was my own voice. All I could feel was guilt, shame, and contempt. At one point, my ex even had the gall to suggest a threesome. With the guy. In October, he even came to me asking about an open relationship, angering both me and my ex and virtually ending their friendship. I was told online when I asked for advice that I should leave. I didn't. I was so fucking naive. I was convinced it would get better, that it all magically go away. And it did for a time. From November to December that year, everything seemed like it. Be okay. Things were becoming as they were two years prior, and all looked optimistic. That next January in 2021, she told me she was thinking of leaving me. She said that I was too emotionally damaged and too depressed to have this work out. I broke down, and her tune switched 180 degrees, telling me it was an attempt to get me to realize that I needed to seek help. She even went to my mom to tell her how concerned she was about my mental health. I did get help, and I finally got myself some medication for the clinical depression I had been dealing with for three quarters of a decade. In February, she cheated on me with a 30-something married guy from her work. She was 20 at the time. I finally understood. The antidepressants that I had started taking the month before helped me to think clearly, and I was able to separate myself from the situation and view it objectively. The love I had felt for her all that time since January 2020 was to someone who no longer existed. We split. I gave her the Valentine's Day gift I bought three days prior as she grabbed her things and moved in with her parents. Valentine's Day was five days away. It's now August, and nearly half a year after we split. I turn 22 in a month, and I'm en route to graduate in May with multiple dream jobs lined up. I'm healthier, 
I started meditating again, and I've begun to improve myself in all areas I can. I thought myself emotionally healed too until not too long ago when I remembered all of this. Even as I type this, I am still having memories come back in real time. I had repressed a lot of what happened. I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm confused. And I am afraid. I have unresolved trauma, and I am afraid of accidentally hurting a future partner if I don't resolve this before I begin dating again. Moreover, my ex was the only partner I've ever had. I know no experience beside what I had with her, and it's made me anxious for future relationships. Worst of all is that I have no one to talk to about all this. Literally no one but me, my ex. My ex's mom, and the two men involved know what happened. I am reluctant to talk to my friends, because I don't want to smear her name among the guys she grew up with, even if she doesn't talk to them too much anymore. I have the gals from university, but I'm concerned what implications may come from ranting about my ex to some girlfriends. My brother is anti-relationship after a series of toxic girlfriends, and my mom cheated on my dad. All I have is therapy, but I can't afford it and my university's counseling center is overbooked. I know I can't fight this alone, but I don't know what else I can do. Thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the notification bell as well.